everyone, welcome into the fame. Fall is right around the corner. Football's in full swing. The Dallas Cowboys are 2-0, and we have rookie linebacker Mark Nazacha in on the show with us tonight. I'm excited to be here. And we have super fans in the house, too. Y'all know number one fan, Mrs. Price. Also, Greg Wilson, the wrecking ball is in the house. How could we not know them? Let's get started. The fame starts now. The fame. Lindsay. Tony and Dallas's biggest names with all things football, food, fandom, and fun. More than just the game. Welcome to the fame. Welcome in to the fame, everyone. Here we are at the Rustic. So glad you're with us. And for those tuning in at home, thank you so much. I'm Lindsay Draper. This is Tony Banks. And this is episode two of the fame. We are so glad you guys are with us. Cowboys are 2-0. and oh. What? That's a real in thing. In control of the NFC East, in to say the least. In control. Tony, what are your thoughts about the game in Philly? Well, you got to respect the division win, but, you know, losing Mr. Romo is not a good thing. But I tell you what, Brandon Wheaton's going to play his best football his career. What's he feeling right now? Well, I've been, you know, well, the poor man's t Tony Romo, the incumbent, and I've been the backup that uh, came in because of injury. I tell you what, he's getting a lot of reps. We've seen this documented over the last few days that he's been getting Wednesday reps, which is a great preparation day for any quarterback. Most veteran quarterbacks take Fridays off, which is a little slower pace, as you know. And so Tony he's getting, takes Wednesdays off as there well. You go. It's just a ritual. Tony takes Wednesdays off, and that's a big-time preparation day. It's full-speed practice normally. So Brandon Whedon, I think, is prepared, and he's a smart guy. He's, he's, a, he's a young, inexperienced as far as snaps, but he's got experience in the age bracket. And you talk about experience and smarts. Anyone impressed with Sean Lee's return yesterday? Oh, Mr. Lee. Huge, Mr. huge Lee. game on defense. Interception, he was all over the field after moving over to the weak side spot. I mean, how impressed were you? Well, he's able to cover so much ground. He's so athletic, and you can tell that Dallas defense really missed a playmaker on that second level. That's what he is. He's able to roam the middle of the field. Like you said, he's, he's going over to that weak side, so in zone coverage, he's able to really follow the quarterback's eyes and – Got, our, got, got your guy, Mr. Bradford. I know you're a Sam Bradford fan. Speaking of, of linebackers, though, we have a very special guest joining us. Yeah. He is new to the Cowboys, a rookie linebacker. Please give a very warm Dallas, Texas welcome to Mark Nazacha. Yeah. He enjoys horseback riding and sunsets. <laughs> yeah, you're in the middle. Welcome, Mark. Thank you for having me. Yes, we're so excited you're here. So you are a Cowboys rookie. Give us an update, though, first of all, just, just where you're at as far as rehabbing and being back to the team because everybody's waiting on it. Uh, you know, I tore my ACL in uh, early November last year and uh, been rehabbing ever since. Uh, been rehabbing with the Cowboys ever since I got there. And the Cowboys training staff has been doing a great job with me. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm 100%. I'm good to go. You know, obviously I'm on the PUP list, which um, still limits me as far as practice right. goes, but I feel good. And at training camp, you really started picking it up towards the end. Uh, tell us a little bit about just your experience becoming a pro. You know, it's been a great experience so far. You know, just being out there in Oxnard, California, um, it was a great time just, you know, seeing how pros work, how, yeah. how the life is of being a pro, and just being a <laughs> – just being <laughs> – a part of that team, you know, has, has been a great experience so far. Well, now you're on the big market team, America's team, oh, yeah. right? Tell us, uh, <laughs> tell us about some of the differences in living uh, in Wyoming compared to Texas. I know uh, Wyoming, you went to school at the University of Wyoming. That's a little different landscape maybe than uh, <laughs> yeah, Dallas. Yeah, maybe just a little bit. <laughs> um, you know, it's like, it's day and night, you know? I mean, Wyoming, Laramie, Wyoming, where the university is, uh, population of like 30,000 people yeah. you know you have one store you have one bar maybe the general store huh? <laughs> exactly <laughs> and yeah it's it's um so far it's I mean it's like I said it's day and night and I really like Dallas you know like the people are real nice there's so much to do so far it's really great so Mark tell us about just the draft experience what that is like as a guy in college and did you ever expect to be a Dallas Cowboy uh, to be honest, I did, not to be I did not expect to be a Dallas Cowboy. You know, coming off injury, um, I had my doubts to being drafted, obviously. You know, I was uh, handled uh, being a mid-round guy. But, you know, injuries always uh, are difficult to deal with. So, 
Yeah, I was really blessed, you know, got the call from Jerry Jones um, mid-seventh round and, you know, couldn't be any happier. Yeah. Dreams come true, right? Absolutely. Now, we were just talking about Sean Lee. Now, um, we know you're, you've been evaluated as a very explosive linebacker, getting drafted. Why you're uh, rehabbing an injury says a lot about maybe your physical skill set. Yeah. You, uh, who do you pattern your game after, and do you really follow guys like Sean Lee? Absolutely. Sean Lee's, uh, even before I came to the Cowboys, one guy I definitely looked up to. Uh, I like Luke Keekley, like yeah. those kind of linebackers, you know, like, like you said, athletic type of linebackers. So what has it been like gelling with a bunch of guys who not only are performing well, but are such a tight group of people? I mean, it's unbelievable. You know, it's, it's, it's great to be around, you know, so much. Um, they're so, so hungry, you know, like so hungry for success. And that defense, you know, it's like from last year, it's like um, there's so much improvement, you know, and like with Sean Lee being back. Well, I know when I first came into the league, the, the biggest adjustment for me was the preparation side of it, that, mm -hmm. you know, so much time was designated for preparation, you know, whereas most of us in college, we rely on just physical gifts. Absolutely. And then you're forced to approach the game a different way. How has that transition been for you? You know, it's definitely, uh, like you said, it's, a, it's definitely a transition. You know, it definitely takes a lot of work because uh, – yeah, everyone at this level, everyone is good. You know, everyone is fast. Everyone is gifted. So um, you got to uh, put your game to the next level. And a lot of that has to do, like, you know, with mental preparation. No doubt. No doubt. That study. Can't substitute that study. Well, I love this conversation, but it is time to take our first break. Mark will be back on the show to talk to us about his incredible journey to the NFL. Stay with us, everyone, at home. And here at The Rustic, we've got much more to come. We're talking big, lifelong Cowboys fans. They're coming up to join us on stage. Yep. Stay with us. Introducing our 2015 NFL lineup. Get your favorite team's Bud Light can for game day. Bob LaBelle for Home Marketing Services, here today to discuss the New Year's resolutions that we've all made. Let's see, there's uh, going to quit smoking. Yeah, like that'll happen. Uh, going to lose those extra pounds, work out. Yeah. Uh, going to be a better person, whatever the heck that means. Uh, going to quit renting and stop making the landlord richer. Hallelujah. Get out of the rent race. Hallelujah. Finally, a resolution we can all keep. Welcome back to the fame, everyone. So glad you're with us tonight or tuning in on Saturday morning. Wanted to remind you that this segment is brought to you by John Hall of State Farm, Bud Light, and Bob Lavelle of HMS Marketing. Tony, glad to be back. Always a pleasure to be here with you, Lindsay, talking Cowboys. And now we get to talk to some fans. Huh? Some super duper super fans. duper fans. I know you guys have seen this guy. <laughs> it's time to bring out someone you've seen on the Jumbotron, on the sidelines. Everywhere. Everywhere, Greg Wilson of Wrecking Ball Helmets. Come on out, Greg. G Money. <laughs> I'm all right. Thank you, buddy. Thanks Glad for being here. See you, you again, Lindsay. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, Greg. Here's your mic right here. First of all, tell us the concept behind what is on your head right now. Well, actually, it started off. Um, it's, I was actually in a helicopter squadron back in my early days in the military, and we would go to barbecues and we'd wear these helmets to the games and you're not going to wear a two thousand dollar helmet to a uh to a sporting event and i thought wow it's such a great energy that we were bringing to these barbecues and everything else the kids would love it the all the ladies would love it of course and um <laughs> ultimately what happened is uh it turned into this really great i guess concept to bring to sporting events and it gets tons of attention it's a walking billboard do you remember <laughs> your first sporting event that you went to with the helmet oh yeah vividly it was um it was actually a playoff game against philadelphia it was uh, oh. a, and the get enemy. this it was the it was the year that uh we were playing them three times it was very rare and so when you beat a team three times you call it a hat trick so i thought nice. this was the i thought this was the perfect time to introduce this idea, because this idea had been manifesting for several years. I'm, I'm an aerospace engineer by trade, so I always had this idea. I was cooking it up for years yep. and years and years. Yeah. On that note, let's bring out another super fan who I know everyone here is familiar with. Mrs. Price, come out and join us. The number one super fan. The number one fan of the Dallas yeah. Cowboys. Hi, Mrs. Price. This is my girlfriend, by the way. 
So we stand up for sorry, Herbert. Sorry, honey, don't. My, my wife is watching this. I'm sorry. I'm, with, <laughs> I'm cheating on you. Thank look you. Look at thank those flip-flops. Hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, just take a look right here. Two of the biggest Cowboys fans. Now, Mrs. Price. Yes. Your fandom for the Cowboys goes way back. Way Can back. you just even sum up quickly your love for the team? Is that possible? Oh, my God. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, 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 really hard to really tell you how I really feel like now with what's going on. This happened in the Super Bowl there with Troy Aikman and all. So now I feel they really need me. Being seen is one thing. I thank God for the favor on my life, but they really need us if they ever need us now. Go Cowboys. And uh, uh, I can remember when this happened to Troy and Jason Garrett stepped in and we did just fine. Things happen for a reason. I don't understand everything, but I truly, truly love them. They are America's team. The organization is simply super, but I just love them, okay? Cowboys! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just love them. They are just really, really awesome. I was a very, very young girl when I first started, and I never changed. It was the Dallas Texans and the Dallas Cowboys. Texans, they flipped a coin, and the Texans went to Kansas City. So we have the Dallas Cowboys, America's team. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Price, you are at every game. I mean, even in London, Miss Price is overseas. She yes. does not miss a game. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Jones, correct me if I'm wrong, comes up to you by name at the at AT&T mm -hmm. Stadium. Yes. Mm -hmm. They always come through the tunnel. Everyone speak. They're very, very, very cordial, very friendly. And let me tell you something. Although for some reason this favor is on me, this go for all the fans, every single one of them. Even they that fan on your love forearm? their fans. And don't you forget that. Yeah. I mean, if they could sign an autograph, for, and that's impossible because we have more fans than anyone. Woo! But... I'm telling really, we do it. We are America's team. But they truly love their fans. They come, they let you know, hey, I appreciate you being here. And listen, fans, we are the Dallas Cowboys because we're the one go to the games. We're the one buy the T-shirts. We're the ones that do all those things. And that organization appreciates it, okay? And, and you cheer, yeah. and you cheer for everybody. You scream everybody's name. I only played for the Every Cowboys about three single months. Every single, I would just my name a few times. Mark, Are you sure, you, Tony? <laughs> yes, I to, when Tony was there, it was like I remember. Right? Am I right? Uh huh. Yeah. It was right, and I don't even know. Uh, Tony had, Romo had not made no. it. Quincy, Quincy there? Yeah, he was a rookie. And do you all know what? Hello, we had three black quarterbacks <laughs> in camp. Yay! Really? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. It was Tony Wright and Quincy. And then along come Tony Romo and a lot of other players. Yeah, much but improved. I can tell much you this, we had a one. <laughs> and for some reason, some of them just locked in my heart. And I just go, I can call their names all day. I stayed in training camp. That's what Mark said. He said, we love you. They like you. Everybody He's does. Can we get <laughs> one more round of applause? Yeah, Ms. give it up. Love you, Greg Price. Wilson of Wrecking Ball Helmets. Time to take our next break. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Stay with us right after the break. It's Beer 101. America's favorite vacation company is flying nonstop from Dallas, Fort Worth. Save hundreds with Apple Vacations to Mexico and the Caribbean. Secrets Resorts and Spas offer unlimited luxury for adults only escapes. Airfare, hotel, premium brand drinks, gourmet meals, all tips, and more. Call your travel agent or visit us online today. Apple Vacations, America's favorite vacation company. Introducing our 2015 NFL lineup. Get your favorite team's Bud Light can for game day. I'm here with Tara Dollar, our beer expert and resident Cicerone. Now you brought us an IPA today. Tell us something about what an IPA is and some specific about this IPA. All right, so IPAs are an English style of beer. What you do is you take a pale ale, you put in more hops, 
make sure there's more alcohol and turn the whole thing way up. Uh, today we're going to be trying an American style IPA from Goose Island out of Chicago. Uh, American IPAs have a really great uh, grapefruit aroma, a little bit of pine, and a really good malt balance. So I'm going to pour a little here. Yeah. You can see this is a this is just a really crisp, lighter style IPA. It's going to be great with the chorizo and bananas here because the Hot bitterness in the IPA interacts with the capsaicin and the peppers and the chorizo and actually makes it spicier. You know we like it spicy in Texas. Oh, big on the capsaicin. <laughs> Here we go. We got fried food and an IPA for you. Thank you. Welcome back to the fame, everyone. So glad you are tuning in. And if you're at home, happy Saturday morning. Glad you're with us. Back here, I'm Lindsey Draper, joined by Tony Banks and Dallas Cowboys rookie Mark Nazacha. Thanks for being here tonight, Mark. Absolutely, thank you. Let's fill the crowd in and our viewers at home with a special fact about you. Mark came over to the United States from Germany to play college ball. So, Mark, not only have you accomplished that, but you've done a great job with your career. First of all, what's it like? What's, what's the difference of home and here? You know, um, I grew up in a small town in the southern part of Germany and then went to Wyoming, which, to be honest, wasn't that big of a culturally difference, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so was it, was it a little bit uh, intimidating saying, okay, I'm going to leave home and go to the United States? Oh, yeah, no, no doubt, you know? I mean, even though I was old a little bit, I left home when I was, uh, I was 19. It was still, like, you know, definitely overwhelming. You know, I'm leaving my country, you know? to pursue a dream, you know, across the world. But, you know, looking back, I'm glad I did it. Well, I know I have, I have a brother in Norway who's coaching a club team, 17 and under club team oh, out in Norway, and he tells me some of the attention to details. really hard to coach because, you know, the kids have been playing a little bit, but they haven't had that coaching on detail. Did, did you find that, too, that once you got to Wyoming, the detail was just ramped up a little bit? No doubt about that, yeah. You know, um, playing in Germany, um, there's, you know, the coaching, like the – the knowledge is just not there, you right, know. Right. So um, you keep it really simple and uh, really just go out there and play. You know, there's maybe one or two coverage on defenses, and then you really just run it around. Chase the, the ball, play, right? You know, Chase the ball. Pretty much, you know. So from that standpoint, it um, was definitely a big change coming to college. Yeah. So your younger brother, Eric, is now playing linebacker at Wyoming. Very cool to be in your footsteps. Very, very cool. So is there a lot of uh, live streaming back home with your parents and family watching the game? Yeah, you know. What's the time difference? The time difference uh, is plus eight hours. Wow. So if we have an afternoon game, it's, uh, you know, well past midnight back home. Yeah. Okay, now it's time to have some fun. We've talked Germany. Now we're going to talk this or that. So oh, I'm going to I'm going to give these things to you guys. And you're going to tell the crowd uh, about the this 90s hip hop right there. Here's the game. Here's the first question. Would you, you rather you first? play? Who are you asking first? Uh, we're going to do both of you guys. Okay. So we'll start, okay. we'll start with you, Mark. All right. Would you, if you weren't playing in the NFL, yeah. would you rather play professional baseball or soccer? Oh, soccer, no doubt. <laughs> oh, wow. That was so easy. Yeah, do you have easy. skills? No. <laughs> But you know Germany won the World Cup. Right. That's, that's, that's our You're sport. You're into it. That's so you sport. played Absolutely. some soccer, though. I did play some there soccer. You yeah. okay. There you go. There you go. Definitely growing up, played some soccer. Well, I've already played professional baseball. Wow, Lindsay. Tony, I feel like so you really wanted to say that. So I'm gonna say soccer too. You know, challenge <laughs> myself like a little challenge bit. Challenge yourself yeah. a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. All right. It's like Dave Winfield over here. <laughs> All right. Next question: Would you rather eat chocolate for every meal or never eat it again? Ooh. Never, never eat it again. No. Yeah, not that big into chocolate. Is it just me to all the girls out there? I feel like guys don't like sweets as much as us. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but I could eat chocolate every meal. I'm no? with you. You know, I like a good mole, but I could do it without chocolate. Yeah, you see, know what I'm saying? Uh, that, absolutely. <laughs> all right, here's one from our lovely producer, Gina. Would you rather be without elbows <laughs> or without Ooh. knees? Wow. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Gosh, uh, without elbows. I still got to be able to run somehow, you know. True, true. You could still make a tackle without an elbow, I'm sure, right? right? I, I, I use my shoulder, you know. <laughs> you know, I'm a QB. I need my elbow. So I think I can make do. I can still throw spirals on, on no knees. How are you going to drop back? You can't. No. Who can needs I to drop back anymore? In the spread offense in these days, nobody drops back anymore. Can I see that? <laughs> All right, here's a good one. Think hard about this one. Would you rather have toes 
as long as your fingers or fingers as long as your toes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Here's a yeah, sample. Yeah, probably toes as long as my fingers. Yeah. Toes as long yeah. Would that make you faster? It'd probably make me faster, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking that would give you better balance. I'm, yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you, Mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Would you be able, would you rather be able to read minds or fly? Uh -huh. Or what superpower would you want? Mm. Mm. That's a good one. Read minds or fly? I want to be able to fly. You know, that'd be big time. Fly back home. I would back. definitely. Fly back home, back and forth. I would definitely want to fly because I could care less what most of these people are thinking. I don't want to read their minds. That's, That's a good so point. Tony. That's a good point. I love it. I hope you guys like that game. We'll do more of that yeah. next time. One more time, big round of applause yeah. and Dallas, Texas, welcome yeah. to Mark Nazacha. Yeah, Mark, so one. glad to have <laughs> you tonight. <laughs> Stay with us at home if you're tuning in. Musical guest coming up next. Introducing our 2015 NFL lineup. Get your favorite team's Bud Light can for game day. Bob Lavelle here for HMS with frequently asked questions. Joe asked, Bob, your client seems so happy with their experience at HMS. Is it because of the great home deals they get or great customer service? Joe, meet our customer service department. Well, it's time to stop waiting. It's time you move on out. HMS can get it done. We're number one. here on the fame just a few more minutes left plenty of time for the last segment i'm lindsey draper joined by tony banks and it's time for tony's segment that's just rude what do you got Tony? thank you lindsey this is a segment where we like to highlight some rudeness whether it's on the football field or in everyday life and we got a little of both today lindsey i love it the first that's just rude segment we're going to talk about uh, demarco murray hurdling brandon carr his former teammate and then bullying the kicker, Dan Bailey. Former OSU, Anyone OU, see that? little battle. Anybody see that? Now, I thought DeMarco has just completely lost his manners and forgot where he comes from, which is the Dallas Cowboys. So my next that's just rude highlight, we're going to talk about uh, Steve, not, let me get this name right, Steve Renazazi, who is the actor from The League. Anybody here watch The League? I know there's some fellas out there that watch The League. Come on. And he's also the BW3's kind of pitch guy, right? The, the Buffalo Wild Wings pitch guy. So this guy has been lying about being, a, being in one of the towers on 9-11 for the last 14 years. Now that's just rude. I hear it out there in the audience. That's just rude, Lindsay. I love it. Well, something that's not rude, you guys, get excited because it is now time to bring out our musical guest. Please give a big welcome to Jake Glenn. Jake Glenn. Yes, yes, yes. There he is. The man, the myth, the legend. Hey there. Here. Welcome, welcome to the show. Love your wardrobe. Thank you very much. Yours did, as well. Did you pick it out? I did. Uh, at this point, I'm, I'm able to dress myself now. So <laughs> it's taken 24 years, but I'm, I'm pretty much there. I love it. Well, you're a few minutes away from performing for us tonight, but tell us a little bit about you and about your music. Yeah, that's right. I uh, was here last year, and y'all are letting me say some words this time, so that's cool. <laughs> it's nice to sit on this comfy couch with you. There you go. A little better couch this year. But yeah, so I'm a Dallas musician. I grew up playing around town, and I still play around town a lot. I grew up... Uh, following some old school blues cats around yeah, town yeah. and sitting in with them at jams. And uh, then I went to school, played in a festival band in Boston and uh, played some music for the hippies and then realized the hippies were wrong. And now I'm back here <laughs> and that's what I'm doing. So bluesy, so you talking about way back like B.B. King, Eric yeah, Clapton Yeah, I, stuff, I do that, but I kind of try to stray away from that because people you. get like a little stale on the blues. So uh, it's like rock and roll, soul, funk, R&B. I'm going to show you in a little bit, but bam. without the band. But I like it. Yeah, we do it, man. You would dig it. I can tell yeah, by that yeah. pocket square there that you, you would be about you it. See, I, yeah, I, 
I'm, I try to be stylish. I try to be hip. Yeah, <laughs> Tony tries. Uh, yeah, we can't all be beautiful. You know? <laughs> Jake, hey, we have video, actually, of a documentary that you put together. Exactly. Tell us a little bit about that and, and what yeah, that experience right. was like. So I, uh, I actually never had any aspiration to be a filmmaker. It just sort of came upon me. Those guys I was talking about that I followed around really uh, took me under their wing uh, when I was a young kid and let me sit in and hired me for gigs when I really had no business being there and just helped to groom me. And so I felt sort of an obligation to tell a story of something that's happening right here in our town that not a lot of people know about. And uh, yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool film. It's uh, it's called The Blues Conundrum. If yeah. anybody wants to check it out, sounds like the Very content cool. is really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. It's uh, some cool stories of. I mean, you know, a lot of people don't realize that Dallas has a sound. Like, there is something very uniquely Dallas, and we have some really rich musical history here, and I did what I could to uh, spotlight it. It's a first filmmaker attempt, but it turned out all right. It has character. We can say nice. that. Nice. Well, congratulations go. on that. And you are adding to the music, Jake, and the sound of Dallas. We're very excited to have you performing on the show. That's all the time for Tony Banks and I. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, come out, hang out, get some good food at the Rustic on Monday nights. We'll be here to talk Cowboys, have awesome guests, and tune into TXA 21 at 8.30 on Saturday mornings. Thanks so much for tuning in. Jake Lynn is up next. Sanity.